Today, let's talk about temples and shrines, the differences, the similarities, and how to behave while you're there. Oh, I love lessons, they're so much fun. Okay, first up, how to find a temple or a shrine. Really, all you have to do is walk around or take a look at Google or Apple. They always have a little shrine icon or a temple icon. It's usually like a little Tory gate symbol or it's like, it looks like a Nazi sign, but it's not a Nazi sign. It's a swastika, but it's not. It's for the Buddhist temples. So you'll notice it that way. It turns out that that symbol predates Nazi Germany. That was really interesting to look up. So, moving on from that. When you go to a temple or shrine, you will see a lot of people, a lot of tourists, both from Japan and from outside of Japan, and you just, you really want to make sure that you are being as respectful as possible. It's completely appropriate to take pictures and to take video, but you don't want to be really loud, you don't want to be running around, you don't want to be causing a scene. The temples and shrines hold a lot of history, Temples are Buddhist, and then shrines are Shinto. At the temples, you don't have to do a lot of like ritualistic stuff. I mean, you don't have to do anything at either of them. You can just go in and look around. But if you wanna do like all that stuff you see in movies and whatnot, um, at the shrines, you can go through the motions. And that's basically, you throw a coin in as an offering, you ring the bell, and then you bow twice, and then you clap your hands twice, and then you pray, and you bow again, and then you leave. I never do that because I get easily embarrassed and so I just don't want to do it in front of other people. And there's always a lot of people there, so that's why. Try, you make offering and pray. Throwing money. So that's basically it. We, when we were in Japan, both in Kyoto and in Tokyo, we encountered so many temples and shrines. Kyoto, you're gonna find a lot more because Kyoto is a lot more what you would think of as traditional Japan. They have a lot of temples and shrines. It's like, it's like very old Japan there. A lot of the buildings look very Japanese, like what you would see in the olden days. They've kept a lot of the older structures. Osaka is going to probably be more of like a blend between Kyoto and Tokyo, and then Tokyo has a lot more of the modern structures to it. Tokyo does have some of the like Edo structures and does have the shrines and the temples. And honestly, honestly, you can just walk around and you will find temples and shrines everywhere. You might not know what they're for. We walked into this one in the middle of Tokyo over by the Sky Tree area in Sumida and it had a lot of like little tiny looking Buddha type things, but we went through a Tory gate, so I feel like it was a shrine. So I'm not really sure what that was all about. If anybody knows, please put that down in the comments because I'm very interested in why there were a lot of like baby looking Buddhas. I don't know if I can say that, but that's what they looked like to me as a foreigner, like baby Buddhas. They were cute, some of them were not cute, but most of them were cute. And then also when you see the area with the water, that water is for purification. So you purify your hands and then your mouth and that water is to purify you and to clean you because you're dirty is what it means. And sometimes what's fun, and I think I mentioned this in another video, but during certain times of the year, they'll have different festivals that are going on. And so going to a temple or shrine is a great place to experience Japanese markets. And they'll put up kind of like little stands, little food stalls, and they'll have people come in with handmade goods that they're selling, a fair slash market. But we went to one in Kyoto and it was really cool because we got food which I hope by now we all realize that the only reason I travel is for the food. So if you're expecting something else, I'm so sorry. 
So they had a lot of different foods and goods that you could purchase. They had a lot of crafts and knickknacks. I got my mom these super cute little cats that hang on shelves. It's really adorable. And you can just pick up a lot of cute items, a lot of handmade items. Mostly it's all about the food. And sometimes too, you'll be lucky enough to come upon a wedding. That's really fun to see a traditional Japanese wedding. I think that's typically going to be in a Buddhist temple, but I'm not positive on that one. But it's really a unique experience if you get to come across a wedding. So that's pretty much all I have for temples and shrines. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe. That would be awesome. And don't forget to follow me on those fun social media platforms and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much guys. Bye.